If you're involved with any FPV-related social media at all, you've probably been hearing a lot about a relatively new simulator out called Velocidrone. Some of that talk may have been from me, but even some top pilots have been showing it off via live streams on Facebook. So why all the fuss? Well, stick around and I'll be glad to tell you. There are a lot of FPV simulators out there. Some are decent, some not so much, but very few get it right. Either the physics are off, the menu is a joke, the controls are bad, or it's just a quick cash grab. Velocidrone is still pretty new on the scene, but while some other sims are contents with made-up frames, in spite of a few big-name sponsors, or maybe because of, Velocidrone has real frames flying real maps with some really good physics. What Velocidrone does, it does right, and that's saying a lot. Pouring over the settings menu, you've got your standard toggles like video interference, gate markers for races, but switching over to the quad settings, you realize your flight controller has an option for beta flight, and suddenly you feel a lot better about your purchase. We'll talk more about that in a moment, just know that you definitely want to choose beta flight. Setting up your controller is simple, and most controllers are detected automatically. To set your control axes, you simply click them and follow the on-screen instructions. A model on the upper right of the screen demonstrates your actions, so you can check yourself as you go. I recommend setting up a switch for race start and reset. Also recharge battery if you plan on using the battery simulation feature. This helps you get used to flying with a time and power limit, though there doesn't seem to be a way to know or change how many amps you're drawing. It would be nice to see this added in the future, as one could then more accurately simulate their normal race conditions. Velocidrone contains both multiplayer and single player modes, as well as an in-depth track editor. There are 17 different aircraft to choose from, all of which are from well-known brands and models ranging from old school hits like the ZMR250, inexpensive favorites like the Lee Sam 210, and even high-end RTS like the TBS Vendetta. You're sure to find something here that you'll enjoy, my personal favorite being the Catalyst Machine Works Speed Addict 210R just like the one I really fly. Once you've chosen a mode and an aircraft, it's time to choose where to fly. There are 14 maps to choose from, ranging from indoor arenas to large open spaces, each with a number of track layouts you can switch between seamlessly. You've got football stadiums, warehouses, abandoned buildings, even a gymnasium. The track selection is not only impressive in number, but in variety as well. Neon gates line factory walls. Official multi-GP courses fill a football stadium. There's plenty here to please pilots, no matter their taste or skill level. Switching between maps is fast, and between track layouts is instantaneous, even in multiplayer. Once you're in a map, you can slide your mouse over to the right to access the in-game menus. The advanced drone setup menu is where it gets good, as this brings up the familiar Betaflight tuning interface. This isn't just a name drop either, Velocidrone accurately simulates the Betaflight code in-game. What this translates to is an accurate representation of your IRL drone in-game. With the right settings, you can create a pretty solid model of what you fly day to day, down to the stick feel, and put in more time on the sticks regardless of the weather outside. Those skills will, in theory, translate to the physical world. Having Betaflight in Sim also doubles as a pin simulator, in case you ever wanted to work on your tuning skills. Another settings menu adjusts the physical properties of your drone, such as drag on the front, back, left and right sides, prop size, thrust, etc. Some of these controls aren't exactly intuitive, but through trial and error you can find a match for your real drone. I felt there was too much thrust in game, so I dropped to a lower prop size than what I normally fly. Maybe it's time for a motor upgrade, I don't know. Being a less than stellar pilot, I tend to go for the more open and flowy tracks. Velocidrone lets you jump from freestyle flight to racing with the press of the key, or flip of the switch. If you hit a gate while racing, you're placed at the previous one for another attempt while the clock continues to run. Now maybe that's not realistic, but it's a lot less frustrating than taking a walk of shame after every crash. I found myself taking more risks and experimenting with higher camera angles, more or less expo, higher rates. Being able to experiment in a consequence-free environment is a big sell for simulators, especially one that does it this well. If you're tired of racing alone, but don't want to show off your skills just yet, Velocidrone does feature a time attack mode that pits you against your worst enemy, yourself. Once you complete a lap, every subsequent lap you'll be joined with a ghost of your best time. It's a great way to monitor your improvement as you blast by yourself, or to cringe at all the times you crashed out of the last lap. Multiplayer is a blast. Whomever starts the room gets to control the map and track, as well as start the races. You and your buddies can buzz around in freestyle, jump into and out of races, switch maps, switch tracks, it all just works perfectly. 
Tracers help you keep track of each other on the course, and it's a lot of fun to see someone crash out, only to catch up and overtake you later in the same race. After a win, you can watch your opponents in third-person spectator mode, or tap into their FPV feed and taunt them on chat. It all works the way you'd expect it to, so much so that it's a no-brainer. That's a sign of good design, by the way. You don't think about any of it, since it just works exactly how you'd think, and it works well. Should you tire of the many tracks and options included in Velocidrone, you can try your hand at the track editor. You can choose from any of the maps to build your creation, and there are plenty of gates and obstacles to choose from. The interface is basic. In fact, this is the only place I feel like Velocidrone could really use some work, but everything does what it should. It's easy to rough in a track and then go back and add details, but I feel like it could be much more. You can press a key to display a small grid of 1 meter dots, but there's no way to snap to the grid, which would really be nice. Moving around the map can be frustrating, but it does become easier with practice. Don't get me wrong, I'm not complaining. It's a very good map editor, and as a race organizer for a multi-GP chapter, it's a great design tool to have at my disposal. I just hope it gets some attention in a future update. Here's the thing. I've tried all the FPV simulators out there. Seriously, all of them. I won't name names, but you know the ones. The plucky little mobile app that could, the big name backed behemoth that had so much promise but feels empty, the TV star. It's a crowded market and there's only so much money to go around. Velocidrone hits a sweet spot at around $20 US, and what you get is a serious sim that makes you want to fly. I keep going back for one more lap, one more race, something I never did in the others. Velocidrone feels good. It feels like flight, and isn't that the point? It needs some love here and there, but not where it matters. No, where it matters is where Velocidrone shines, and accurately simulating the feeling and experience of FPV flight. This isn't a video game, this is the real deal. Buy Velocidrone. Seriously, buy it.